सो हेलो एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेल टू एम डी एस टेंडल अकेडमी होप यू ऑल आर फाइन माई एक्सपीरियंस सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ नीट एम डी एस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी पेपर डिस्कशन इफ यू आर नॉट वॉच पार्ट वन एंड टू यू कैन क्लिक ऑन द आई बटन अबाउ एंड कैन व्यू इट एंड ऑल्सो फ्यू एक्सपीरियंस आर आस्किंग रिगार्डिंग इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सो एक्सपीरियंस यू कैन चेक अवर अकेडमी प्ले लिस्ट ऑलरेडी सिक्स टू सेवन वीडियोज आर अपलोडेड ऑन इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन Fine. So let's start with the today's video. So, best response in cold vitality testing of teeth is perceived to which agent? It is dry eyes. So, as parents, we will see the review of pulp vitality test. So, in thermal test, we have a heat test and cold test. So, please, as parents, know the response. So, we have true positive, false positive response, true negative, and false negative response. So, in true negative, is the response is for longer duration. we consider it as irreversible pulpitis for shorter duration it is reversible pulpitis or vital tooth in some cases we have false positive response whenever the thermal testing is done on gingiva or adjacent tooth with a vital tooth it is true negative in case of necrotic pulp and false negative in case of calcified canna now we have electric pulp testing also when there is a high reading it is necrosis low reading vital and sometimes we have the negative response that is in case of calcified canna we can go for dentinal stimulus also if it is positive it is considered vital negative it is non vital then we have the highly accurate test there is a pulpal blood flow remember as friend there is a high blood flow it is considered as high inflammatory rate means pulpitis is present then as friends we will go with another question that is growth hormone secretion remember growth hormone secretion is enhanced by fasting remember this feedback control of growth hormone its secretion is increased by starvation protein deficiency hypoglycemia low concentration of fatty acid exercise excitement trauma and ghrelin remember ghrelin is a hormone secreted by stomach then what is the minimum distance of maxillary major connector from palatal gingival margin it is 6 mm you can see as friend in this diagram the distance of your palatal connector should be 6 mm and it should be parallel to your gingival margins then which of the following point is not true about kids gleed and drills remember they don't have cutting teeth They have a sequence from one to six with a deep diameter of 0.5 to 1.5 mm. They can be used only in straight portion of canal and they cuts with withdrawal. Let's see few other points of gas cutting drills. Remember its shape that is flame shape cutting instrument, and it can be used for preparing the coronal two third of molar canals. It can be used to remove gutta percha from the canal during post space preparation or during retreatment, and they widen the canal when an instrument has fractured within it. Let's see another question. A patient is suffering from hypercapnia and metabolic acidosis. So, what's the best way to calculate acid-base imbalance? You can go for arterial blood gas analysis. Then, as per during a forensic evaluation of a subject, an investigator uses a method of age determination in which seven teeth of left lower quadrant are examined. So, this method is what it is Damigeon method. Remember, it was described by Damigeon in 1973. It is based on the development of seven left permanent mandibular teeth, and here there are eight stages. Then, a case report experiment: a patient present with a slow-growing mass on the left cheek in front of ear lobe. So, sample is sent for gene analysis and cytogenetic analysis reveals an anomaly of chromosome 8q12. So, the diagnosis here is pleomorphic adenoma. then one more important uh, question aspirant a patient has come with missing upper second premolar and first molar and he is seeking for four unit fpd so as per iso specification 1562 the type of gold alloy you will employ is type 4 type of gold alloy then if there is a difference in coefficient of thermal expansion of a restoration in the wall of cavity of tooth it will lead in loss of marginal integrity then aspirant what is a shown by number 2 in opg so what this indicate it indicate sigmoid notch let's see all the important bony landmarks in mandible so this first will indicate your condylar head 
this is your sigmoid notch this is coronoid process this one is external oblique ridge this is mandibular canal this is posterior border of ramus this is gonial angle this one is lower border of mandible this is mantle ridge this one is genial tubercle this one is mental foramen remember aspirant mental foramen is more closely associated with your first premolar this 12 one is your external oblique ridge 13 is your lingula and this is your hyoid bone so please remember this bony landmarks in mandible then experience in electroplating silver is what it is unknown then a 40, 54 year old male with a history of chronic alcoholism and signs of liver failure report with a jaw lesion which need to be treated surgically so which test will employ to know the clotting ability of patient serum it is pd that is prothrombin type then aspirin let's know the difference between warfarin and heparin remember warfarin is not safe for pregnancy heparin is safe in pregnant women for warfarin the antidote is vitamin k and fresh frozen plasma and for heparin the antidote is protamine sulfate so when you are giving patient warfarin you have to monitor inr value and for heparin we have to monitor a ptt then let's see another question bsf nogram is used for which of the following it can be used to assess gene deviation in a patient then intrusion of tooth is registered by what it is registered by alveolar crest and oblique fibers then experience a female with a severe rheumatic heart disorder shows mitral regurgitation so which of the following prevent complete mitral valve prolapse into atrium it's a code a tendon then a patient is there who is in the iq level of 90 to 109 as per stanford binet classification so it is considered as average let's see the classification remember if the iq level is around 145 to 160 it is highly advanced 130 to 144 it is very advanced 120 to 129 it's superior 110 to 119 it is highly average 90 to 109 average 80 to 89 low average 70 to 79 borderline 50 to 69 mildly impaired and 40 to 54 it is moderately impaired then one more case report a 30 year old with female has a semi-circular radiolucency associated with the cervical part of maxillary lateral incisor on the right side so you have two things you have to remember as parent patient is female young age and involving the anterior teeth when you go for histopathology it reveals island of cuboidal tumor cells with individual cell keratinization but keratin pulse are absent so here the diagnosis is squamous odontogenic tumor then when an acrylic denture is skewed about 100 degrees when will porosity be seen it is seen in the thickest palatal areas then true regarding gp points remember it is color coded according to size then remember aspirant histamine is released by basophils so that was all for the part three if anybody need the latest paper of 2020 2019 they can DM me on the number or they can visit the academy also. And we are going to start the new batch on 20 December. If anybody wants to join for demo lecture, they can contact me. Till then, experience, take care, study hard. See you tomorrow with the part 4 of NEAT MDS 2020 paper discussion.